Welcome to part three of our four-part series where we are designing a plastic injectable enclosure for Dr. Strange's all-seeing eye of Agamotto. In part three, the power of the eye is transporting us into a new world, the world of fastening features. While this world may seem mysterious to the uninitiated, you'll walk away from this tutorial realizing fastening features aren't so strange after all. We have the basic design of our two-part enclosure complete, so let's start by adding some fastening features to our parts. All the fastening feature options are found under Insert, Fastening Features. Here you'll see the option to select from some powerful tools for creating complex fastening features like mounting bosses and cantilever snap hooks. Creating something like a hardware mounting boss using traditional modeling techniques would take significantly more operations than running through this single fastening feature tool. But let's start our navigation of the fastening feature world by adding a lip and groove features to our parts. Select the lip slash groove function to enter the property manager, which as you'll see is pretty self-explanatory. We will simply work from the top down, selecting the top half of our enclosure to create the groove, and we will create the lip on the bottom half of our enclosure. Let's select the top plane to designate the direction of our lip and groove, and this is also the plane where our enclosure halves meet. Notice when you move down to the groove selection box, the body that will have the lip is automatically hidden, which aids in selecting the faces the groove will be cut into. Select the faces where the groove will lie and move down to the edge selection box and select the edges that the groove will hug against. In this case, we're selecting the inner edges. As you can see, creating lips and grooves doesn't require a fully continuous edge. You can jump across cuts in the part, such as the revolved cuts we made in our enclosure. Now let's repeat these operations for the lip side of the enclosure. Lastly, we can set our parameters for the width of the groove landing and the lip width, as well as draft angles and any designed in gaps for fit tolerance. In this case, I'll design in a two thousandths of an inch gap between all of the faces. Now let's take a look at the cross-section view of our parts, and you'll see that the lip groove fastening features have been created. Now let's dive into adding some mounting bosses to the parts. We'll start by creating a sketch on the inside face of the bottom half of the enclosure. We will just create a circle sketch to center our mounting boss in and add some dimensions in relation to the ribs to constrain the sketch. Navigate to Insert, Fastening Features, and select Mounting Bosses. To position the mounting boss, first select the face it will sit on, and then we will select our circle sketch to center the mounting boss in. You'll now see a preview of the boss which you can begin to edit in the Property Manager. Under Boss Type, you'll see the option to create a hardware boss or a pin boss. In this case, we're going to create a hardware boss, and on this half of the enclosure, we will add what's called the head of the hardware boss, designed to fit a number two thread forming screw for plastics. The head portion of a hardware boss is the portion that the head of the screw sits down in. The other half of the enclosure will house the thread mounting boss where the screw will be threaded into. We will also choose our mating face where the head and thread mounting bosses will mate. This is the parting line of our enclosure. We also wanna create a little bit of a gap between our mating faces to build in a little bit of tolerance between our mounting bosses. Now let's set the various parameters of this head mounting boss to fit the screw, doing our best to maintain a consistent wall thickness, in this case around 45 thousandths of an inch, and we'll set the draft angles as well.
Lastly, we'll set our support fin dimensions, again setting the wall thickness and draft angles. Click the green check mark and you're done. Imagine modeling this complex geometry using traditional modeling features, and you'll realize just how powerful this fastening feature tool is. Now let's add the thread side mounting boss to the other half of our enclosure. We'll follow the same steps, selecting the face we want our boss to be mounted, and we can use the same circle sketch to center our boss in, but this time we're going to choose the thread hardware boss option under type. When we created the head side of the boss, we focused on maintaining a consistent wall thickness. For the thread side, I recommend researching some basic best practices for designing hardware bosses. There are several free resources out there, and a simple Google search for design for assembly or plastics fastener joints design principles should bring up some valuable resources. In short, we want to set our thread side parameters to a hole diameter equal to the pitch diameter of our screw, and we'll set the outer diameter of our boss to be at least two and a half times the external screw diameter. I'm going to set my hole depth to maintain a consistent wall thickness around the outside of my part. And lastly, I'll adjust the parameters of my support fins to match the head side mounting boss. And there you have it, complex mounting bosses added in two simple steps. Keep a lookout for the final part of our four-part series, where we will stay in the world of fastening features by adding in some cantilever snap hooks and grooves to our enclosure.